Well, so far, if you're tuning into the live stream, you've missed myself and Ripley. Actually, David and Ariel have also missed us uh, discussing a panoramic uh, iPhone images taken from the roof of the Grand Seca headquarters to form their ultimate mood board. And how, if you misalign a panoramic uh, image, you end up with like two Mount Fujis or Mount Iwates so that you've got uh, extra inspiration. Uh, David, as you will see, is joining us from from what appears to be a car showroom, but uh, we're waiting yes. for security to ask LS, it is not live on YouTube. So I had we, set we up how that goes. Yeah, I had set up an appointment for for a mechanic uh, for for the car uh, for this morning because we normally record on a Tuesday, so now we have to make do with what we got, and this was the closest. I just dropped by. Yes. Well, yeah. I'm particularly looking forward to the moment where we make David clap, and I feel that the clapping <laughs> is we need to, as, as as seal like as possible. Uh, we <laughs> and, and, Great. Um, do that. You know anyone. what they don't have? They don't have waiting rooms where you can sit and wait for your watch to be repaired. For your car, you can sit and wait for your watch. I mean, no, it would be like because a six it's six month months. Rent. <laughs> yeah, yes. I know that's going to say jokes. It'd be like an Airbnb, you know. <laughs> right well uh, let's uh, crack on we've got a busy show today so let's get you clapping in so uh, on the count of three two one three two one clap three two one three two one uh, david has anyone looked around suspiciously at you as you've been clapping no nope. the tiramisu is just really good that's what he's applauding yeah, yeah, he's he's had to buy himself a tiramisu. Um, I have to have a tiramisu, me. so you will see me eat for the first time in a hundred episodes. <laughs> and in a really nice white T-shirt as well. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> anyway, welcome to this week's a uh, blog to watch weekly. It's been a busy week for all, uh, but for Dave and Ariel, it's been particularly busy because they have been and they have then subsequently left Geneva Watch Days. So let's get some first impressions, because Ariel, I th was this, this was your first Geneva Watch Days, was it not? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, out of 10. Um, well, I can say the first thing that I felt afterwards was, I can't wait to get into air conditioning again, uh, <laughs> which I eventually did, and it was blissful, I have to say. So, so good. Um, there was a heat wave, I guess. I don't know. I'd never been that warm for me in Geneva. So, you know, that, that sort of casual style dress that I've been known for and got uh -huh. um, a, a, accused of being too casual, that was ramped up significantly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it actually went from, hey, I wish I was wearing shorts too. Or George Kern's like, what? We go into the beach? You know? <laughs> <laughs> um but yes for the uh brand that has many uh diving and surfing watches that's where i wish i was going i saw the fountain of geneva in a whole new way as i wished it was gushing down upon me uh oh my god a breeze to <laughs> waft it in your direction but uh i guess i got to know which of the watches was the most sweat resistant or not because immediately as i put things on my arm that was damp the entire time out of the sh sheer perspiration of the event um <laughs> There was a major difference between those bracelets that were and were not comfortable on the wrist. So so which bracelet turned out to be the most sweat resistant? Um, you know, I was actually impressed with Chopek. Um right, okay. they had this rubber that they said was rubber. It, it it was it was supposed to match their um aventurine dials of the antarctic right so they have the metal bracelet but there's also the strap that comes and it's rubber but it looks like blue fabric and it has these small i guess you call them inclusions that make it kind of shiny so it's one of those i i, I bet you can't guess what material those straps uh looked like fabric actually rubber sweat resistant cool and which was the i can't believe it's not fabric yeah <laughs> <laughs> which was the what you had to get off your arm the quickest because it was so oh, warm. I don't know, remember which one it is, but it was probably one of those very sharp metal bracelets that, um, in addition to pulling your hair, is just squeezing your, your wrist a bit too much and just wasn't comfortable mm -hmm. like, like that. So but there's there's always one or two of those because, you know, your your wrist is expanded. It's so humid that your body's a little swollen. So like a swollen wrist and a tight metal bracelet, no, no. No, no. David, what did you enjoy the most? You've been to, have you been to mm. all of the Geneva Watch Days? 
Yes. Yes, yeah. this is my fifth. Yes. Is uh, it, it was a lot better? of fun. Is it, was it better this year? Or I just got the feeling that it was becoming really, really clogged up. That actually right. There's almost too much going on now. Yes, uh, that was exactly going to be my, my point, that it's grown so much, it is as though it could not handle the growth this first year. So, so everyone was a little bit staggered a little bit, you know, for, for a moment. Mm. Like, oh, what do we know, do now? Like, is it still people just show up at random, or do we adhere to the appointments that we had set up, or what's going on? So it's quite big, and then they said, you know, there are more brands in the city than there are at Geneva Watch Days, which is kind of crazy, because there are like mm. 50 brands at Geneva Watch Days. So I think that was an exaggeration, but like, I guess you could safely say that there were at least 80, 90 uh, brands, small and large, uh, present at the same mm-hmm. time, same week. Uh, so Geneva Watches has really come a long way, and I'm not really sure that they should grow further, because the further they grow, the more organized it will have to be, and the more, you know, the, it will grow to be as stiff as Watches and Wonders is my worry. Mm-hmm. So let's hope that mm-hmm. does not happen. I mean, presumably the, there was the usual hangers honors those that just so happened to have a room in a hotel uh, but weren't officially part of Geneva Watch Days in the same way that it works at Watch and Wonders? Was was it just expanding and expanding? That happened when, when you were there and, and, and we were there together, but, but not this year. This year, anyone who had a room um, already were part. What was funny, though, was that at the Beau Rivage, where most of the brands have their, or a large number of brands have, uh-huh. people were getting kicked out of the lobby and the cafe for yeah. showing watches. Yeah. Because they were not paying, you know, they have to sum like yeah. seven, eight thousand, however many hard yeah. currency for the privilege to be in a, in yeah. a room. So, so don't just don't just go to the terrace, the garden terrace, to unroll your watch roll to show your latest uh, invention. I mean, I not at the Borivage. I remember seeing Sylvan's at watch. That would be three years ago. Yes, at the Park one, Cafe. The I think two years ago. And that was basically unrolled from a from a watch roll, so we we would have get kicked out for that had we done it this year, at the at the Beau Rivage. You would just not believe how many amazing creations are being revealed from watch rolls at Geneva Watch Days. It's probably <laughs> <laughs> the highest in the world ever, all year round. So, did you see anything? Uh, did you see anything you can't talk about? That we want to talk about? No. <laughs> no, no, no. I just want to know whether whether there was the usual, or oh, this is coming in a few years' time from the, the 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 guy who's still working for the guy, but who now wants to work for himself. We've, we've seen a few of those over the years. Is that still happening? Is there still folk looking to stretch out on their own? And and this is where they're kind of floating the ball uh, amongst all the watch journalists and YouTubers and all the rest of it. There's a lot of new brands. I wouldn't say that mm. any of the independents had many embargo watches. I'd say most of the embargo watches were from the exhibitors and a lot of established brands. Mm. So 30 to 40% of the stuff that we saw at the least was watches that are going to come out later in the year. And there were a hefty amount of brand new companies, but I don't think there was other um, burner ons around where someone's like, this mm. isn't quite ready yet. Maybe we didn't see all those things because we stuck to a lot of the formal meetings. Um, mm. But it looks like people have been putting together watch projects for the last few years. People are trying to launch and now make some money. Um, I think a good example of that <clears throat> was Breitling had a pretty good showing there. And we had multiple Breitling meetings between you know David being in Zurich, which he can talk about, to a dinner and an event. And they introduced their B19 automatic chronograph perpetual calendar movement, which is pretty cool. But, you know, we, we kind of joked around about this. They they launched it in the form of three limited edition watches that in total number 420 watches, $65,000 a piece. Um, so this is, <laughs> this is a very ambitious ask, right? So that's mm-hmm. what we're seeing a lot of is less sort of scrappy stuff and more of the big brands having announcements that in a lot of ways are more ambitious asks of the market than would they would have it at Watches and Wonders. Hmm. Good. So, party of the event? Favorite meeting? Party? Always Bulgari. You can always count on Bulgari. I mean, it used to be Brightling, <laughs> but it's no longer that. It's uh, They have a little cocktail event of sorts or something. But Bulgari had a proper rock concert because they have launched this collaboration piece with Fender. 
And yeah. so, you know, there is an actual band with, uh, with a proper uh, performance and all the rest of it. So it was kind of cool um, and fun and loud. And this was also the send-off party to Anton Pan, who has who's been the technical director for Burgery for many, 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 many years. Uh-huh. And now he's becoming the CEO of Tank Hoyer um, yeah. in a game of not musical chairs. It's not fair to call this musical chairs. It's, it's musical chairs for Tech Hoyer, but not for Anton, because he's been uh-huh. at Bulgaria for so long. So it's going to be cool and interesting to see a technical-minded guy at the helm of Tech Hoyer. Let's see how that mm-hmm. goes. Mm-hmm. Ariel, favorite meeting? Um, I actually had a watch that has been on my mind that we can't talk about, but from Roger Dubois. Um, the level of detail... And nerdery, the count, that combination is for me a new apex, right? So, okay. like fine finishing, incredible effort meets. Wow, when I was ten years old, I would have been so so into that. Um, <laughs> and that's kind of the well over, I think, three hundred thousand dollars. So we'll talk about that soon, but. Um, not necessarily something that I would be able to wear on a daily basis, but it is actually really stuck in my mind. Cool. Uh, Ripley, what was, from a distance, what release, either that we've covered already or that we're due to cover, or maybe that we'll decide not to cover for various reasons, what what uh, what did you see from a distance that was attractive to you? I mean, the, that long is pretty, but, like, you know, it's not even price upon request. It's like, we will only give this price to worthy collectors who express interest at a boutique, which is like, they have found a new way to say no to my inquiry. Okay, I guess I, I will give them that. <laughs> but I mean, it's so limited. It's like, it's almost, there's no point. Like that, the honey gold one they um, launched at Watches and Wonders was sold out basically by like the second or third day um, of the show. It had already been claimed by retailers, and I imagine this limited edition will be the same thing. That was a really pretty watch. That Someone went hard on that uh, white gold dial with a little chisel thing and gave it that nice frosted effect. Um, Do you mean Handwerkskunst? Oh, y- 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 it's schnitzel, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Handwerk <laughs> schnitzel. You know, it's uh, funny you mentioned that, Ripley, because Arlong and Zona had nothing to do with Geneva watch days. So what amuses me is all the brands who well, there decided was Shanghai. to lo- I know. Well, it wasn't Geneva. The thing is this. Is no, there's Watches and the- Wonders Shanghai, which was like, I guess, happening at the exact same dates. Because like sort the Roger of. Dubuis, the Roger Dubuis stuff was from Shanghai as well, I believe. No, no, they were there. They had, they actually had meetings at the thing. So what I'm saying is there's all this time throughout the year, but brands decided. Oh, to I'm thinking of Ulysses launch- Nardon. The Ulysses Nardon was from, uh, or no, Gerard Perigo, I think. One one of these guys was at. <laughs> Name another brand. Uh, well, uh, another Victor. brand doing something in precious metals I can't afford. Some something pretty, something <laughs> yeah. open worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it gets to the point that there was all these companies that, that were not in any way at Geneva Watch Days. They were launching news then. I was like, why couldn't you guys wait a week? All the media. I never understand that this. news. Like, why all pile on? Like, oh, me too, me too. Like A freaking handwork school. We've been working on it for five years, but we can't wait five more days to launch this freaking yeah, thing. Yeah, it's like the it's ridiculous thing. The easiest way to get overlooked, ignored, is to release something at a show you're not at. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, well, the, the, the fact that there's two shows, like, running right on top of each other seems also absurd. The fact that I can't remember <laughs> who was at what show because I'm just writing about everything in the week. It's like... That's problematic. That like, is it UN? Is it GP? Basically, the same brand on a financial level. Like, whatever. You know, they were at one of these things. You know, it, it's wild that we're at that point where it's like I don't even know who was at what show. Y'all launched stuff last week anyway. It was all in solid gold. I guess the point uh, for Rick is that this has become such a popular show. Brands are pretending to be there. <laughs> <laughs> now that's cool. Well, that's a- well, that's a very good idea. I mean, maybe just you need Chat GPT to launch a a watch show. Just you just you just do all the AI to pretend you're actually there. So no where's going to be if you can't be in Beau Rivage's lobby anymore? Where's going to mm-hmm. be the new like renegade place where like the guys' projects post up? Will it be the fondue place by the water? It's going to be a kiosk out by the lake. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Hi guys. <laughs> 
five guys. It's always empty anyway. What's interesting is that it's like, <laughs> upstairs and five guys. No, nobody wants to spend forty dollars on a small fries and a burger. Okay, uh, and, and so basically what happened is Swatch Group showed up with um, uh, with Glossy Original, with uh, Breguet and Blumpan officially. And right. they have underlined it several times that, oh, we are paying for this a lot. And I'm like, well, you haven't paid for anything at all for seven years. I mean, I'm happy you could <laughs> break the piggy bank and finally join Crayon. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, very good, very good. Blanc right, Blanc well... had a cool outside thing. They had a... Mm -hmm. Airstream. This is re re funny. It's like they sort of cobbled I was just about together. To ask you, not just not just bring a horse box and park it outside. <laughs> and they double your no, so they they, they yes. cobbled together this idea from other brands. Oris had the Airstream, and other brands had that. Brightling did sort of the pop up food thing, and they had this truck that was giving out baguettes that actually had stamped on them Blanc Pan, mm -hmm. which of course means white yep. bread. So for mm -hmm. me, this was the most uh sort of uh, uh humorous a brand was able to be about itself <laughs> so the the white bread brand is handing out white bread and not just a watch seven people, years in the making in geneva yeah <laughs> you have gluten free uh, no it was just baguettes it was just that's it <laughs> you know it is blanc pot it's our way or there's no other way <laughs> uh but that you was you know gluten. that was nice yeah uh, good good uh do you think that the do you think they found it funny do you think like one person in blanc pot found this a funny joke, but just had enough authority that everybody else had to go along with it. Was there a swatch version allowed, of the baguette? Did you get like a cracker? Or like a... <laughs> That's right. There's a, there's a, uh, yeah, like a there plastic were, I mean, look, version. There was a little bit of the old, you know, stuffiness from the swatch group where they're not necessarily mm -hmm. able to say everything, but they had their they had their lines, which was as David said, hmm. <laughs> we are paying Geneva watch days, even though we're about a block and a half away across the water. Um, so yes, <laughs> we, we don't feel guilty walking away from the, sh the non-show show. Um, <laughs> and, and it did feel like the swatch group in a lot of ways is kind of back. So uh -huh. multiple of the brands we met, um, <clears throat> profess to having some watches that were under development for a couple of years that they're now releasing. And they kind of hinted, I think Blanc Pond maybe, or maybe it was Breguet, but they're like, you know, to turn a brand around or do something different or to have a new product, I forgot exactly what they said, takes several years. So, you know, now that it's been three, four years since all this mess and shows have been coming back again, they have some plan, they have some revitalization stuff. I'm actually, maybe it's not founded actually, I don't know, we'll see, but I'm actually kind of excited. Oh. They were going to come out with something, and Ariel has vanished. The, 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 the clearly the long, uh, the, the long hook of Swatch Group has reached Ariel. And vanished. I think oh, it was back. the Hayek. It's, it's the, the revenge of the Hayek, Ariel, right there. Hayek <laughs> Internet. I hit the back button accidentally, and that small little tip of the finger. Um, anyways, well, I was that's, saying that the, 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 the Swatch Group all brands. The Mm -hmm. appear to be sort of uh getting their mojo back having some interesting plans um so i think the next you know one to two years will i think have some surprises there cool cool well hitting the back button just like the watch <laughs> companies have been doing for back the last 20 years anyway right let's uh look at a watch or actually let's look at two watches uh there were if you count this as two watches then i think there was these two and one other watch that i saw during all the coverage that actually felt to me like the sort of thing Geneva Watch Days was meant for, whether you like it or not. Uh, this was the H. Moser & C. Studio Underdog Passion Fruit Watch Set. Sigh. I confess, and in our WhatsApp chat, I think I was maybe a lone voice going, I don't get this. I don't uh, get this. This, this makes... The, the only, this makes sense to me as two guys who are just friends who decide to do something. And that's absolutely 100% fair enough. You own a watch company, you can do what you like. But in terms of st strategy, I don't get it. So you guys both saw these? Were you at the launch event? Uh, we saw them. Um, we went to, you know, we had a meeting with Moser and, and the, the watches were there and other places. And Moser... You know, for what it's worth, put, tried to put together some nice materials. They had 
a floral arrangement that matched the colors. Um, I think there was some kind of interesting <laughs> photography done between the two guys. Um, I, I'll get to the point. I found these watches both aesthetically unappealing and from a, uh, a collabor- collaboration perspective, mystifying. We've asked yeah. a lot of these CEOs, you know, what, is, what, what defines a collaboration to you? And oftentimes the answer is that the sum of the parts has to be more than each individual brand can do. They both have to bring something to the other side. And there's none of that here <laughs> at all. Yeah. Uh, th- these, these watches could have been simultaneously released and not sold as a set. Uh, they're so vastly different price points that like, it doesn't make sense. It also kind of like, I think in a sense makes Moser look bad. It's like all the looks of a two thousand dollar watch and a sixty five thousand dollar watch or more, right? Because <laughs> yeah, so that was my first like thought as well. Inherently simple. I I will I will say again that this sort of combination of sort of almost like a sickly purple and sickly yellow uh, seemed to be designed to attract certain species of birds and insects more than human beings. Um, so I think they struggle to find like actual real world um, colors other than the passion fruit that look this way. Um, mm-hmm. No one's looked at the passion fruit and said like, I want to eat that fruit. They've done everything to it to extract <laughs> the fruitiness from the actual item, which is strange looking and almost unedible. So it was sort of like <laughs> guys were saying, like, let's make the most uncollaborative collaboration possible um and see what happens and i i feel that that's how i justify it these guys knew that this was ridiculous yeah. and said like will they eat it up will people like this nonsense yeah i think the problem is it's a watch design based on a pun uh the idea like if a passion fruit if if a passion fruit hadn't been called a passion fruit so they couldn't be talking about passion when it came to watch design and all the rest of it and the whole launch of this they, they couldn't have done it. If if passion fruits had been called apples, you wouldn't have released this watch colours. But it's because they can then ride on the whole, it's the passion of watch being, oh, passion fruit, oh, look at us. I, I just don't get it. The Moser also, I just don't think it's a good looking watch. And it's a, it's Normally it is, but not in this spec, it isn't. Yeah. yeah. And the Studio Underdog is probably the better looking watch of the two. Uh, and as you say, it costs one sixtieth in theory of the, the price of the set. David, well, your final thought? Yeah, I, I was. I was sorry. I like uh, Aria's choice of words of, of mystified. You know, when I first saw these next to next to each other, I thought to myself, "Wow, I know that one is sixty times more expensive than the other, but they are not supposed to be this similar." I mean, and it's interesting because I've had a grinding years in the making where. I always, you know, just stalled when I try to explain this, but it is true that a lot of stupendously expensive watches look virtually, uh, you know, um, the same or extremely similar to much, much, much cheaper watches. Uh, and that's just a strange trend. And to launch these two next to one another, and again, this is not to ignore the values of, of um, Moser's Perpetual, which is a fantastic watch. It's a fantastic, brilliant watch. Uh, but still, to put it next, it's a ballsy move. It's, it puts big, big well, trust in the world in the world of collectors kind of like to say. It's like an April Fool joke, right? Yeah. Like, look how similar it is, and yet well, you pay think, sixty times over. I think where they where they get around it is they're not in competition with each other because you can only God, if you if it was everyone would just say oh that's fun whatever I get to say the passion I'm gonna get the 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 studio underdog and how it'll look the same. You can only get them in a set. So this is literally, so the person buys one, throws the Moser in the safe. Where's the better looking of the two watches with that doesn't have one fiftieth of the monetary value. Excellent point. And and then you're also still flexing because you, you obviously still have the Moser at home, but you're wearing the other one. So it's like, it's like the, it's basically the watch equivalent of that sticker where it's like my other car is a Porsche GT3. (laughs) You know, my other ugly watch is more expensive. Right, my other my other ones are perpetual calendar from Moser. Like that's exactly what this is. So I kind of understand why it happened. Now, in really these... tried to justify it there, Rip. I appreciate <laughs> that. I applaud you, but Matt's but it's true much. because it, it's a thing among collectors, especially a certain type that I personally don't really like. Is this if, if you know, you know, kind of guy. You know, oh, I'm wearing this, but now you know I already have another one. I'm like, God. I mean, when when they make you jump all these hoops, as opposed to just wearing a ball or watch, you know, they are like, oh, but you have to know that this dial is only for nine. It's really bad, but that's Do ex- any of us wear clothing that right doesn't ever match. I mean, I'm thinking like people, you know, who accidentally buy this, <laughs> they're going to be like, "What's the one occasion <laughs> I can wear this thing? Where, like, like what? I just don't uh, know where." 
But is, is it like an anti? Is it just like an anti theft device? You know, like it, nobody it, wants to steal that. That's true. You buy, you maybe, buy maybe. the hoser, but you wear the other one because that's the one you get robbed of. Maybe you just collect like revolting watches. You open your watch safe and it's just revolting. Who's the revolting gang member who's educated enough in the watch space <laughs> to know about this thing? <laughs> I wonder, you start contacting them and say, I, you know how they talk about stealing watches to order? How do you suppose this conversation goes with a watch I want you to steal to order? Is the one that looks a bit like a passion fruit, but the other one's actually at home. So you need to find the guy wearing the passion fruit watch and then follow him. And the other one's in the safe somewhere, or you know, <sighs> sitting in the bed. Stand. Well, it'll be it'll <laughs> be interesting know. to see Weird. like which ones of these end up floating up on like eBay or Chrono Twenty Four, where it's just like you end up seeing a bunch of the Mosers where the guy got it was like, <laughs> yeah, I got it. I thought it was funny, but then I realized I've got like a sixty thousand dollar perpetual calendar I never wear. So yeah, let I'm me go ahead. I'm somewhat convinced this was a joke, and they're not actually going to make yeah. any of these. Maybe one someone really one. wanted the underdog, and they're like, well, I just wanted the underdog, and now I have to sell the Moser for like. <laughs> Three thousand two hundred. You know, and underdog and the Mozart people wear them, and they just they just pretend to do a launch. I, I swear yeah. that's what it is. I we mean, actually David, saw you're... some cool watches that are coming later in the year from Moser that you know will mm -hmm. hopefully make people forget about this. I just hate that this is for the next <laughs> few months, but we need to think about when it comes to Moser. It I kind love, of looks like I love someone this. hit Pac Man with a uh, with an axe in the head. That yellow one on the Moser. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's with the tiny I... green accent? They both have it. It's what, a stem, where... right? It's like a stem. The stem. So, so that's really? the where. <laughs> Jeez. On the Moser, Ugh. that's the perpetual calendar hand. Yeah, so that's gross. the month indicator. I know, gross. I was going so to say it's so gross. gross. <laughs> uh... This is a worm. But look, if it backfires, all they have to do is change the dial. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, exactly. Really. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, the ultimate flex has got to be buying the set and selling the Moser. This so is almost if, like the answer when you ask, like, chat GPT, what collaboration watch do people not want to buy? Do some research. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm doing now, don't you? <laughs> Chat <laughs> GPT. <laughs> uh, yes, let's see if we can get Chat GP to answer that. While... It's right on that edge, actually. It, it really is. <laughs> a very educated <laughs> answer to that question. Right, well, let's have a look at this. I, which I believe you also got to try on. And I think this was the other watch that I'm like, yeah, okay, this is what an event like this is for. And this is the Constantine Shaken Thin King, the world's thinnest mechanical watch. Okay, so how surprising was this as an entry into the world of thinness? I wasn't shocked. Right. This I mean, typical uh... Russian, hey, big expensive corporation, we can do better and cheaper. <laughs> We have pencils. You have yeah. Space I mean, pen. that's that's what this is. This is just pride. We can do something insane that you never would have seen coming out. We, you know, uh, this is a concept watch. I want everyone to realize that this is not being sold yet. It's not totally done. There's this snap-on part. Basically, what this watch is, they took a human being, they cut them in half, and say the torso and legs are separable, right? Because this watch still needs this module that snaps on the back to do things like set the time. <laughs> um, so. Chaikin was able to engineer half of a watch that lives separate from the body. Yeah, that's actually true. You, you need so some what tool if you to mine lose, it and just set it. What if you lose that crucial back snap-on part? You can't wind it or set it? Send a letter to Moscow. Um, yeah. Okay, and my other question, since you actually got to handle this one, it looks like there are like literally exposed jewels in, like on the case back of the upper part. If you wear it without the back, aren't you just going to get debris like legitimately right into the point where those two pieces mount together? Eh, it's prototype. Okay, I've not <laughs> run my finger across those, so I, I couldn't tell. But that's I, I was uh, basically nerved out about it, so I, I didn't I want to like the touch back. That. I think it's the back of it, so I don't think those are you know moving points. I think that there's. Um, you know, it, it's it's relatively safe on the wrist. Look, this is a <laughs> when you have this much thinness, there are many drawbacks. Okay, like this is yes. totally like one of those performance cars with like no paint. You know, steering wheel maybe. Uh, they they literally just wanted <laughs> to make it. 
go fast, and and that's it. Doesn't matter if someone dies in the process. It's so what much I really better looking oh. than the Richard Mill. Yeah, o- Orion and I were joking that this is because it has a face and it's so thin. It's basically shaming fat watches. <laughs> 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 it's setting it's setting unreasonable standards to watches, is what it does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What do we call it? The the, the chike and anorexia. <laughs> Oh, TV, TV. Unattainable yeah. standards for, you know, chunky brightlings <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> oh, dear. Good. I, I, do we expect to see it as a an actual release watch? What's the, what was the chat? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, there's, there's going to be demand for it. People are going to want to see it completed. He'll make a few of them. Um, look, Constantine is a very smart guy. He loves engineering problems. It's his favorite thing to do. He imagines a particular outcome and he spends a lot of time imagining a solution for it. Then he engineers it by himself and he builds it. And this is this is why we love the guy. And this is why he does such amazing things because he's a real watchmaker. The whole Joker thing with the faces and the wristbands, that was almost an accident, to be honest. Um, and that's actually usually how these guys achieve their success is something that just happened to be one of the things hits success and they can repeat it. So this is him combining again, the two things he liked, the wrist mons is technically kind of a face with mm. the, you know, engineering and problem solving, especially on a budget and in ways that maybe the Swiss never have thought of. And I think that that's really part of the, the, the point here is that the particular solutions that Constantine took to achieving the thinness are things that competition would never do, like splitting a watch in half, for example, and making it so you couldn't even do certain things, uh, sort of an audacity. Yeah. And that's sort of like a watchmaker to watchmaker, wink, wink, that only certain nerds can pick up on. Um, but this is, this is a legitimacy and credibility establishing tool as opposed to you know, a moneymaker. What I would recommend is that you guys go and read my article from 2018. It's titled Constant in Chike, an interview and manufacturer visiting Moscow, Russia. And I, I went there. I, I, I spent basically two days with him. Uh, and it's basically not really just a manufacturer visit, but also a profile on Constantine and how his mind works as a watchmaker and as an, as an inventor. Uh, so I would highly recommend that you guys read it because it's an extreme. He is extremely rare, even in the world of talented watchmakers and engineers uh, and uh, if you read that article you will know a little bit more where all these inventions and and exercises are coming from basically good stuff well i uh, first of all you guys can be thinking about what one watch you want to speak about next that we've covered from the show that you're particularly excited to speak about while i reveal the results of the question to chat gpt which is remarkably, uh, remarkably insightful and condemning of what watch brand collaboration does no one want to see, and then we'll read through it because this is hysterical. Lux, they don't want to see luxury watch brands and fast food chains, e.g., Rolex and McDonald's. All the while, not remembering that Rolex did a collaboration with Domino's. So there we go. So ChatGPT knew it was nothing. They don't want to see high-end watch brands and budget fashion brands, e.g., Patek Philippe and H and M. I think that's just that's just the that's just the collaboration everybody's looking for. I'd be for. so stoked <laughs> if I could get like a white gold per- oh my God. perpetual calendar at H and M. Although if it comes from H and M, there's a 50-50 chance it'll just destroy the second time you wear it. So there's there is, <laughs> yeah. there is always that possibility. In a but three and four have been done quite successfully. Exactly. The number third, three. I, the third yes. one is brilliant. The third one. So ChatGPT believes that the thing that nobody wants to see is serious watch brands doing collaborations with cartoon characters. And it specifically names that a partnership between a brand like Omega and a character like SpongeBob SquarePants might not it's be well snoopy. received by traditional I know, watch. SpongeBob <laughs> Snoopy is so <laughs> close, yet Chappy T. I, I, this is fascinating. It, I'm actually, I don't have we forgot that about that AP? Long. Like AP and the Marvel stuff? Like, well, hold it, on. Li- <laughs> this is a computer algorithm that, that's seeing this. It, it, yes. It, what it senses is fascinating. So clearly it, it, it's able to see something, but be so unbelievably wrong <laughs> in part of this. It's not even a hallucination, as I call it. It's, it's some type of misreading the market, but it's, fa- it's fascinating. It's good. And then the last one is heritage watch brands and tech companies. So it suggests that we wouldn't like to see a collaboration between Vacheron Constantin and Facebook <laughs> Can you imagine instead of the instead of oh, the two 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 instead of the wee Maltese cross at the bottom right corner, you just had an F logo instead? I think 
That's definitely so what Jet, Chat GPT doesn't know is that actually companies like Facebook and Google have uh, these invitations where they want brands to come in and present. So many watch brands, um, probably Vacheron is one of them, has actually gone to Google and actually mm -hmm. had presentations on campus there. So I think that's interesting that maybe, yes, as a collaboration, uh, they yeah. wouldn't want the thing on the dial, but there's actually a lot of, uh, of synergy between the people who work there and stuff like that because they're fascinated by like, this is how old world companies work. Well, I think in a week that it, uh, Mark Zuckerberg has been uh, photographed having bought a Patek Philippe uh, straight line annual calendar, I'm not quite sure what the reference number is, that uh, ChatGPT is clearly not cottoned on and has been linking Facebook with Vacheron when it should really be. Uh, Patek, so uh, poor show. Such a lame answer. There's no mention of passion fruit anywhere, and <laughs> a sixty thousand and a three thousand dollar lookalike watch. Maybe we should good. ask what fruits do people not want to be the subject of a luxury watch? <laughs> Maybe well, that would hmm. be a little well, more specific. We can, there. we can do that. We can do that. I quite like in that. The mean, in the meantime, so what watch would you like to speak about next that you saw that we have covered on the site? Is there any? There's lots there from Speak Marine, Armin Strong, Lauren Ferry, Ublo, anything that particularly grabbed your I'll attention? Talk, yeah, I'll say you said, mentioned Speak Marine. Um, a watch that actually surprised me was the skeleton version of the Ripples. So the Ripples mm -hmm. was kind of this interesting integrated um, steel uh, bracelet watch that has sort of a case that not everyone understood and the skeleton at first glance is just a skeleton version of that it's not at all it's an entirely different movement which is actually a five hertz movement as opposed to the th a four hertz movement and the case is nearly three millimeters thinner so it's about 6.3 uh, millimeters thick versus like uh you know 9.2 millimeters thick so you have this really nice skeletonized automatic five hertz movement that's just over three millimeters thick um in a really thin watch case um it's one of the better skeletonized dials in my opinion this again it's felt like a completely different model other than just being the ripple skeleton i don't think they sort of sold it properly but this is this is a sleeper hit price is about just under thirty thousand swiss francs i believe um and yes. i think this was actually quite an interesting watch hmm. David, did you see it in the flash? No, I, I've seen I, I saw a different version of it uh, a few years back. Um, I wish them well. It's it's a brand that I for some reason like, but it's um but not not this watch, not at all. Far from it. It's wide, it's thin, and the proportions are really odd. It's you it's not something that I here. like. It, it, I, I'm telling you, if you well, saw the previous one, it's you didn't see this mm. watch. It looks like it in the pictures. It's it doesn't even use the same steel. This is a 904 L steel versus the 316 L steel on the other one. Oh, that's cool. It's I mean, clearly a lot of work has gone into it. I can, I can tell. That's true. And I, I can that's appreciate that. That's what's cool about it. Like, it's so easy just to see the pictures like, oh, they did a skeleton now. No, Speak Marin, I think the biggest mistake they made was using this case design. Not that it's bad, but it actually doesn't help showcase what this is all about. They've still got this yeah. last city thing going on in the back, which I don't think they understood the first time round when they launched it. It's still yeah, they did. No, there's no mention of that. When you talk to them, no one uh -huh. says that. It's uh -huh. almost as they, they they wish it wasn't there. Um, no one at the brand knows how to explain that. I didn't ask. They mm. didn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask. Is it tell. LA City or what? Well, we don't know. We don't know. No, nobody really understands it. It's it's fair to say. Uh, I just thought we should share before we let Kevin through and play some of his hit his maybe that Chat GPT has named four brands that should do a passion fruit themed watch. And I wonder how Moser feel about being lumped in with these four brands. So the first brand suggested by ChatGPT is Swatch, you know, playful, colorful designs. The second, Fair enough. One, is, second one is Ublo. It suggests would be a brand most likely to do a passion fruit themed watch. Then Seiko Prospects. Turns out ChatGPT knows quite a lot about watches, but there we go. And finally, Richard Meal, known for the high end avant garde designs. So all are, good guesses. I mean. To, All good answers. Richard Mille did a Kiwi watch, and Seiko releases 500 watches a year, so one of them would likely <laughs> be what? a passion fruit. No one would know I this. I feel like this is too fruit. ugly for Ublo. <laughs> too ugly for Ublo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that seems like one of those young That's a low blow right there. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, they actually have really attractive color combinations. I just, I just think it's too ugly for them. That's actually well, true. Well... We have let Kevin into the room. So, Kevin, how are you today? 
Oh, that's very kind of you. I'm that's, very, I'm very kind of you. Okay? Let, yes, we can hear you fine. We can hear you very well. So we will Excellent. have a play Excellent. of Hitmas maybe. But before we do that, we'll remind you that if you want to get in touch with the show, you can email podcasts at a blog to watch dot com and gentlemen don't you know it you can also use whatsapp plus four four seven three eight six six ninety eight nine seven so yeah i think the six ninety like six ninety is the the the, the 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 proper cadence for this phone number so i'm working yeah. on the cadence working there's the a cadence. jingle coming there's a jingle yeah coming. same here this is it for me guys i'm gonna see bounce later. before the eight this maybe he's, see you bye bye he's, he's, okay. he's finished he's finished bye, he's David. Cheers, David. I have to say one thing before we all start. Mm. I am still alive. Yes. Your hitmen have failed. So <laughs> don't worry. I am ready for it. You're ready for Send it. Send your best. The, the, My hitman he's... lost his luggage in Heathrow, so he's still <laughs> sorting it out. <laughs> Did I miss so something? To hear that. that's, that's, that's a side of international you know, conspiracies that you don't see. Is just how normal everyday life interferes with the course of 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 you know criminal masterminds Absolutely. yeah had this on attention and then they lost my luggage <laughs> the flight was cancelled the the train was delayed because of leaves on the line that was yeah, it happens uh, all the time so i'm still alive ario you can't get my watch yet so ripley can't get my mad one yet yeah but there we go try your good, best. good stuff right let's uh play some hit miss maybe first up something a bit away from Geneva Watch Days, but a, a, a large commented on article from the week. This is Tudor Black Bay Chrono Blue Boutique Edition M79360B watch. It's basically the Tudor Black Bay Chrono, but in blue. First of all, before we do the hit miss, maybe thoughts on the idea and concept around boutique only editions. Is this a thing that works at a certain level, but perhaps maybe doesn't work at the level of Tudor, Ripley? Um, I mean, it's not like Tudor just has like, price, like sells it online anyway. So you're going to some physical store, some other retailer to get it, you know, if, even if that is online. So I don't really see it as, as that big of a barrier. And then sometimes you go to a retailer and inside the retailer, there is a quote unquote boutique, which is basically like a glorified section of the store dedicated to one brand so i don't think i think it's just something they get to tout as like an additional thing they can add like oh you can't get it it's a boutique only thing but i i don't think anyone's being like oh i would look i would totally buy this i just can't figure out how to get my hands on one because it's a boutique only i, I want to distinguish the situation from other brands uh, many other brands have their own boutiques and therefore um are sort of making full margin on this um, my understanding is that like Rolex, um, Tudor owned boutiques are actually operated by a third party. So there is a retailer who usually owns and operates um, in, of course, relationship with Tudor, these boutiques. So this is sort of Tudor wanting to have something exclusive for those people that invested in stores, but they're still sort of a third party selling it, which I think is, again, different than, um, you know, some of them maybe like Richemont brands, for example, that has boutique only and it's it's really their store. Mm. Hey. Uh, questions before we go to well actually let's play hit miss maybe on it first and then i'll ask my question so on the count of three is it a hit is it a miss or is it a maybe one two three go maybe two maybe two hits uh, my maybe question and it might just be the photography is uh and i'll share the screen so those of you that are watching on either a blog to watch weekly live or the main a blog to watch channel can see this is that crown in the out position or is that how that crown always sits? It's is it always just like that. No, is it's it? not up. I've, I'd, I've never noticed that before. I, I think the mm. crown is disturbing me. It looks like it's that should be... It's got a chunky, like, stem. It's yeah. Like, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah it no, not position. liking that. So, so yeah. that's, that's why it's a maybe for me. Ripley, why did you vote a maybe? I mean, it's a totally fine watch. This isn't this is hardly new this is like Tudor's playbook is like do one in black then do one in blue like sometime later like th that just seems to be a thing we had a black one and a white one uh now we've got a blue one 
Um, I mean, it's a totally fine watch. I think it looks good. Um, I think, you know, it's got a Breitling movement in it. And you know me, I love Breitling and they make good movements. So it is going to be chunky because of that. I think it looks good on the Jubilee. It is entirely, it is going to be too chunky for those with smaller wrists, but like it's a totally unobjectionable watch. Um, it's just really doesn't feel special. I would have loved to see them do just something else, but I mean, this is Tudor. It's Rolex's little brother. It's incremental, um, evolutions in, derivative stuff but Tudor is the one that's supposed to have more fun so I would have liked to see something else in the chronograph space maybe a new heritage chrono or something else other than just another black bay chrono now in blue but I mean I can't say it's an ugly watch I can't say it's a poorly constructed watch or anything like that so it's a solid maybe if you like it it's you know it will deliver on what it's supposed to do Hmm. Ariel you give it a hit it's a very easy to like watch in a lot of ways it's kind of universally stylish blue goes with a lot of stuff it's comfortable on a bracelet like that it is thick there's that but it's going to wear pretty comfortably and just sort of serve you well my strong strong suspicion is that tudor is ready to discontinue um this chronograph probably for something a little bit more um elegant um maybe thinner um coming in the future i don't know if it's going to be as soon as next year but i'm pretty sure they're working on something like that um so as we said as you mentioned there haven't been that many skus of uh the chronograph honestly they've been some i think the two-tone one was my favorite one actually which i think was really really cool from a few years ago um but i suspect they're just trying to flesh it out a little bit more before discontinuing discontinuing it so you know there's there's literally if this does nothing for you there's no problem but this is a very competent watch that if you had it you'd probably wear it quite a bit hmm. kevin have you got a tudor yeah i mean i voted it a hit it's a tudor it's a chronograph it's it's quite nice the shade of blue is very very interesting i do like it it's not for me personally but it's, they're going to sell thousands of these um and the fact that it's boutique only ariel is right it, it, they're all uh, a combination of say watches of switzerland or bukhara and uh, so it's primarily for them but there's going to be a mad rush who's going to get the first um the the retail price is going to go over retail for the first two months and then you'll see of loads of them on chrono 24 over retail because it's true and it's a decent price for a watch with that that movement in it mm-hmm. and then ultimately it will go under list and everybody will forget about it until the what color are we missing red red chrono maybe yeah well, no green green will be the next green. one green will, green will be, be the next one <laughs> We have a review piece coming. Tudor's sending one out, one out. So we'll get a, we'll get some final thoughts on it. Good stuff, good stuff. Right, something a bit more complicated that uh, you had a hands on with Ariel, Daniel Roth, Tourbillon Rose <clears throat> Gold Watch. Tell us a little bit about this. In fact, I see. Before you do that, I realise that David leaving and Kevin arriving in has completely negated my go around to find out at the very least what. Rep brands Ripley is repping. So before we go any further, Ripley, where are you and what are you wearing? In Los Angeles, uh, I am wearing the Jamberg B2 watch that I wrote up for my column yesterday. Oh, yeah, got yeah, long yeah. jeans on my head long and jeans. Grand Seiko on the shirt. Oh, <laughs> you really Love do it. have a wardrobe stuffed full of watch brand clothes. That's quite scary. When was the last time you bought a t shirt? I don't or buy t-shirts. Baseball cap. I, 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 oh, definitely don't buy baseball caps. Yeah. <laughs> Ariel, where are you? What are you wearing? I'm temporarily back in Los Angeles, apparently. <laughs> um, I'm wearing one of our uh, a blog to watch store shirts. It has the uh, cool. uh, Royal Oak bezel on there. This is the embroidered uh-huh. one. These are, I, I, I thought of this a while ago that this would be a cool shirt, and it turned out it was cool. So um, that's what I'm wearing. Good, good. Uh, Kevin, where are you today and what are you wearing in the wrist? I'm back in sunny Kent. It is sunny and I'm wearing a Doxa Time and Tide uh, limited edition oh, cool. they did. Um, good, good. T600. Titanium. Very nice. Very, very, nice, very indeed. nice indeed. Very nice indeed. Right, well, let's return. I'm in Scotland wearing a panorama. It's not raining. That's pretty much all you'd know. Right, uh, back to Daniel Roth. I, Ariel, tell us a little bit about this. Get a hands on so, with it. The Daniel Roth brand was resurrected relatively recently. It's made by Louis Vuitton's La Fabrique du Temps Mm. uh, facility. The people 
who run that facility were actually working on the Daniel Roth brand um, a long time ago, as well as when it was owned by Bulgari. That is how LVMH originally uh, acquired it. The first watch they they sort of re-came out with was sort of a re-edition. There you see it on the side there. It's this yellow gold one. It was a limited edition. So there's a slightly different guilloche finishing on the back uh, of it, on the sort of dial part or the face that is. Um, other than that, it's just a pink gold version uh, of the watch. You can see that there's also an open case back, whereas the uh, yellow gold didn't. Uh, this is a non-limited edition watch. Um, it might come out in a further co color, such as white gold later. Um, and then after this, I think that the brand is going to start coming out with additional um, you know, complications and things like that. So it's, it's a very beautiful watch. Um, it's not very big. Um, you know, if you are sort of really into the Daniel Roth aesthetic, uh, huge amounts of detailing, um, this is sort of a passion project. Um, so, you know, you could, you could, you could just tell that the people that really, really liked it, they wanted to take the originals and just make something that was much better. Um, so this is just a continuation of that. You know, I don't anticipate the Daniel Roth brand to have more than one or two releases a year. Uh, they want to keep it very, very small and kind of interesting. Um, so it's, it's sort of old school. Uh, in a good way. It's lovely, petite. Um, and again, from a quality perspective, it's just, as you can take a look at it, it's, it's, it's really pretty to look at. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Very quickly, uh, hit a miss or a maybe one, two, three, go. Hit, hit. Hits all round. Yeah. I really like this. Uh, I'm loving the, with the tourbillon, uh, obviously I'm assuming it's a 60 second tourbillon. Yeah. And what they've done is they've attached three different lengths of, pointer to it to sweep around the three different layers of the second track that might make very little sense as spoken word so i encourage you to go and look at the pictures yeah hard to describe to that understand. right i don't it's know what, how i'd it. say it it's it's a uh, it's very cool and i like that sort of thing that's the kind of whimsy i like to see you know what just a a, a different approach to actually the way you need to read it in order to tell the time. Uh, Ripley, what was particularly attractive to you? Uh, I like these. Um, I think it's cool that they did a non-limited one. I like that they did a display case back on it um, because, you know, this is kind of the modernized, you know, upgraded, more luxurious expression of what, you know, these Daniel Roth pieces were originally supposed to be. Yeah, let us look at the movement. It's, go it's gorgeous. Um I mean, I, I think it's an interesting case shape, um, one that's distinct, but not so flagrant or ridiculous. It encroaches upon the point of becoming like cloying or just impractical. Um, you know, th there's not a lot to not like about it. Um, rose gold's rarely my personal flavor of gold, but um, I think this one does it quite well. Um, and yeah, I mean... There's not a lot to say that's bad about it other than it's, you know, quite expensive and I might want to see what the white gold one looks like or something like that. But mm. yeah, it's a great looking piece. Cool. $155,000 or euros, Ariel. If you had the chunk of change, that's where you put it. Look, you could do worse. You could really do worse at that price point. They could have charged 50,000 euros more and probably still gotten away with it for the audience they're going for. This is for the type of collector <clears throat> who's really focusing on wanting something specific as opposed to trying to get the best value for it. Yet you'd get, you know, uh, you know, you, you, you could, you could easily spend more. Um, I think they're trying to bank on the fact that the production is really not high, that there's only going to be a few dozen of these per year. And that ostensibly, if you wanted to sell one, you could. So I don't think it's really sort of about a value proposition, but sort of maintaining exclusivity um, and focusing on, on, on pure expression and technique. Mm -hmm. Kevin, give it a hit as well. I think we're just saying yeah. all round niceness. There isn't really much more to add. I mean, I'm not sure about, as Ripley says, that particular shade of of gold, but it's it is a stunning piece. I love it a lot. The tonos, I don't know what you would call that, but it's they call it the image. double ellipse. Double ellipse. Oh, well, oh, very nice. Okay, I'll give me a I'm not. Yeah, I'm not going to unpack that. that. Not having that. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop making stuff up. Double ellipse. He's a, <laughs> Just he's say a what they call it. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's a mess. Uh, it's a miss, definitely. No, uh, it's it's a lot of lot of money. It's a big chunk of change, but you know, 
there are worse things you can buy for that sort of cash. It is lovely. Um, I'm glad the brand is going from strength to strength because um, it has been sorely missed. And yeah, oh, it's an all-round solid, solid good watch. I wonder how many actual passion fruits you could buy for the price of this watch. <laughs> All of them, Rick. Every a single farm. one of them. <laughs> you buy a passion fruit farm. Somebody go on to, I don't know what the equivalent is in, in the States of what we have in the UK. It's called Right Move. I don't know if that's the same mm. website in the States. It's basically a, an estate agency website. Somebody go on to an estate agency website somewhere and see if we can buy a passion fruit farm. See how many how many. I hope the trees are prettier take. than the fruit. They, they're a vine, actually. Some of my neighbors have them growing on the fences outside their house. It's a house. vine, it's oh, a vine and it makes these amazing sure. flowers. The flowers are way better than the fruit, in my opinion. Gorgeous right. flowers, and then they turn into this, like, leathery sack full of <laughs> seeds and slime. But, you know, it... <laughs> that's where Mozart went wrong. I mean, passion fruit is a name clearly invented by marketers, okay? <laughs> well, that's my point. You have that's to have passion called, to try to eat this fruit. If they called it something else, we wouldn't have the watch. It was just that they wanted the pun of... <laughs> you mean of, slime of, fruit wasn't good? Like, exactly. Wait, you know what an ugly fruit is? Have you, is it called an ugly fruit in the ugly States? Ugly fruit? Have never heard of ugly fruit in the UK? What is that? Uh, oh, no, hold on a second. Just in case I've... Ugh. Uh, Ugly fruit. Just in case I'm completely making this up, but I don't think I am. No, no, no. Uh, so an ugly fruit is one of these. Let me try and find a picture I can actually share. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, it's just called an ugly fruit. It's got uh, to be native to Scotland. Yeah. Right. It, can't, it can't grow. It's so the thing that is <laughs> in the <laughs> No, 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 I'll share it. I'll share it. Hold on, let me just try and find it. The that thing that's starved it. of sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, this is an ugly fruit. I... Yeah. Oh, it's a durian or is that a jackfruit? It's a jackfruit, I think, is also yeah, what it's called. Oh. It's called. Yeah, the, the Californians oh, no, no, turned those into yeah, vegan exactly. tacos. Mm, Moser's right. got one of these lined up for 2025. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a surprise. Anyway, there we go. So, yeah, if it had been called that, then they wouldn't have made the watch. Uh, anyway, Ripley, the thought of you having passion fruit growing when we can barely grow, like, apples or rhubarb in this country, <laughs> something cold is, is frightening. There we go. Right. That's uh, actually what they should have done. They should have made one the fruit and make the other one inspired by the flower. That uh, would have been a way cooler collaboration because the passion fruit, fruit flower, gorgeous flower, really intricate structure, different colorway than the fruit, mm -hmm. better colorway than the fruit. And you can actually, there, it comes in multiple different colors. Um, Stop trying yeah. to ruin their ugly experiment. Come on. You <laughs> want it to be as bad as possible. You, by making it better, you're destroying the whole point. So I, I actually <laughs> like the passion fruit. I love the colorway. It's beautiful. <laughs> so, well, Ruby sir, you... have you have some watches that are sh surely available for you? <laughs> Sorry, good news is good news is there's plenty still available. Uh, who would you have given the who would you have assigned a flower to and who would you have assigned the fruit to between Mozart and Studio Underdog? Well, obviously, Don't the care. flower is going to yield the better looking piece. So we're going to go ahead and give that on the one that costs like 50x the other and let let the, <laughs> let the passion fruit sit with Studio Underdog, who has a whole other theme of vegetables mm -hmm. and pizza themed watches. It makes way more sense for them. OK, so they can stick with the passion fruit, but Moza should have done the flower. Yeah. OK, good. Well, let's uh, solve another problem in the horological world and give this a vote. There might be some opinions. This is the mad, I don't even know, MBNF Mad Editions Mad 1S watch. So this is the new uh, sign up for a, a, a lottery to get a watch that I don't understand. But basically, this is a thinner version of those that have already been produced in multiple carways. Kevin, I think you have one, do you? I do indeed. I do, do like it. Do you wear a it? Lot. Absolutely. I wore it yesterday. Do you ever use it... it to tell the time? Of course I do. Or it's, do you get your um, mobile phone out? No, never, never, ever, ever. <laughs> I use my smartwatch to uh, tell All the right. time. So, you're double, <laughs> so what you're really saying is you wear this and you wear a smartwatch at the same time? Yeah. I'll and have you ever... Do you wear your smartwatch in your right hand? Yeah, on my right hand, yeah. So have you ever gone to your left hand to read the time while you've been wearing this watch? 
the Mad One is a very, very nice watch. I do like it a lot. I'm refusing to answer that question, Rick. By the is way. it a watch? You may have gathered. <laughs> is it a watch in the same way that people, in the same way that some people will say that a smart watch is not a watch? Is this also not a watch? It is a watch. It is a watch. One hundred percent, it's a watch. It's it's mechanical. Mm-hmm. You can tell the time with it. Uh, it's got a strap. I can Very do, nice strap. I, my car <laughs> is mechanical. So those it are the requirements, a, Kevin. It has a seatbelt <laughs> with some Anything straps. Anything with that stuff now applies. And it has a clock. <laughs> <in it. laughs> we we'll finally found the definition. Anyway, right, let's, uh, before we talk further on this, let's give it a hit and miss or a maybe. One, two, three, go. Miss hit, no surprise maybe from me. hit. Ripley, why is it a hit? Um, I, I like the old one. I like the original ones. Um, it, they're not, they've stopped doing just more colorways of the exact same thing. I think it's nice that they took the same concept and then said, what's the one area where we can improve it that's going to make a tangibly better wearing experience mm. and it, the, the other one i mean it is very much a statement piece you've got like a literal fidget spinner under the crystal spinning in lieu of a dial in hands um so it's not supposed to be a quiet and understated piece but the original series was quite tall this i think it's like 20 percent thinner or something like that so it's not an insignificant reduction in size by any means either um purple blue good colorways um you know it's not uh, the, the novelty of this design is largely worn off by this point, but I like that they're keeping it alive and not just beating the same drum, but finding a way to improve it from a functional standpoint and, you know, just a general on wrist experience as well. Mm. You mean they're not taking the swatch routes and going down, you know, well, they could the, put Snoopy uh, on, on the, on the thing spinning and that, 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 you know, who knows? That would be a hit. Yeah. That'll when, when they run out of ideas, we'll know. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. They're not linking it to the moon or, or whatever, whatever it's going to be next month. You know, the, the orange moon or the blue moon or anything like that. I don't know. I, I give it a miss. I think they've already run out of ideas. <laughs> making it, making it a different color. Well, okay, it's an idea. Making it thinner. It's not really an idea. It's just a kind of let's make it. I, I'm, no, I'm no, it's, told, a, it's a gradual to, improvement. And to, and to be honest, me. I. I I haven't got in for the raffle for this one because I've got an original red one. It's I not did consider it. But wait a minute, it's not a complicated watch. I mean, Who it says barely it tells. Complicated. It barely tells the time. So <laughs> why couldn't you have made it thinner the first time around? Rick, the same thing could be said about a time-only Panerai. It's got two hands and is seventeen oh. millimeters thick. <laughs> yeah, but we're compensating for something. What is this compensating <laughs> for? <laughs> Oh, the fact that you can't get a, you can't afford an MBNF, a full, a full fat version. Yeah, That's what so compensating I, for. Yeah, I'm just waiting. Maybe next year it's going to be like the Moser <laughs> Ugly Fruit at sixty thousand dollars. There'll then be the MBNF Fidget Spinner, based on the same thing at like four, and the Studio Underdog at one, and it'll be a box set of the three of them. Maybe the eventual history of watch collaborations is that all watch brands. Are going to collaborate together like it's just like gravity is slowly sucking all the watch brands ideas, i think Rick. every it, bamford it's collaboration blast. is kind of already <laughs> like that it's like bamford x tag x this motorcycle company x ublo <laughs> and all the other lvmh x don perion like they, like they're they're already bamford is one step away they just haven't worked outside of the lvmh group to, to root it in yet yeah it's just just the x x x x x x x watch there go. There, there, that's going to be our brand name. So for our watch design that we've got, that's got you know the tide button on it and the the crank winder, the brand name is just going to be a row of X's because it's the ultimate collaboration, right? Ariel, what do you think of this? So I saw this watch and it is significantly thinner. Um, it's not remarkable how they achieved that. Uh, they just took out the minutes disc, um, so this basically becomes a single hand watch very similar in terms of uh reading as like a meister singer um sort of precise but the funny thing is for a lot of people like that's that's enough i you know it's more or less 11 o'clock you know that's that's okay um you know i've got my smartwatch on the other wrist 
I mean, yeah, I you know, tell you, yeah. they're aware of that. It, like I said, it does create a more elegant experience, and they didn't have to do too much except, you know, cut a, cut a section off. If I recall correctly, um, rather than having the base Miota, I think this has a base Swiss made movement, though I don't uh, know or remember enough about the watch. I didn't really talk to them about to remember which uh, movement it is. Um, really, what's exciting is that the Mad 2 is, is on its way. Um, I haven't seen it yet, but I know the designer is. Um, and he's obviously someone that's worked uh, with MBNF a lot before. So this will be, you know, sort of a rare, inexpensive watch from him, though they're, they're, it's not unknown. Um, uh, this has done very well for the brand. I think the interesting thing is that there are now more mad uh, watches out there than there are MBNF, you know, traditional watches out there in terms of the production. So uh, there's. I think 5,000 or something like that around that, you know, MBNFs. And there's more than that now um, of the, of the mad edition timepieces. Um, so that's, that's sort of the weird thing for the brand is that too many people. Now this is becoming MBNF, you know, I'm thinking like, you know, um, an HM and LM, something like that. But for a whole new generation, um, it's sort of like, you know, when they think Omega, they think the moon swatch, right? Um, so it's going to be interesting to, to talk to people five years from now and ask them, what do you think about MBNF? And then to answer the other question about, you know, they need new ideas. Now they can just ask Chanel. <laughs> do you not think this picture of Max makes you think that the text around it should be come to my symposium where you're going to learn about how to get that big promotion you've always wanted. It's you a know, very Ted, hey, it's a Ted talk smile. You're it's right. a Ted talk. It's a Ted talk image. Uh, <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, right. Uh, and Kevin, how'd you vote? I you, voted a hit. Um, you I show you. Ma <laughs> yeah, Max, I would love one of your full fat watches. Definitely. Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. What can I say? It's a lovely watch. I love the shade of blue and the purple. Um, it's thinner, which does help. But, you know, it's you talk about telling the time. I mean, you've got Van Cleef and Arpels at the other end at <laughs> 300,000 pounds. It's, it's similar to that. No it's one there. has ever made the decision between a Van Cleef and Arpels or a bad one. <laughs> but they don't tell the time. Not even ChatGPT has made that. <laughs> well, you just list all the watches that don't tell the time. It's hard to read. That would be such a exactly. long list. Exactly. Yeah, it's such a long list. It's not well, just a long list. It's a cheaper version tell. of that, effectively. It's, the, Hald it's... the Haldeman, the one that doesn't tell the time at all. Remember that? It just has the turbine. Yes. No time. Oh, yes. Just turbine. Or oh, the, the, Moser, the, the Moser Vanta Black tourbillon thing. Well, the Haldeman uh, had no hands, so literally, yeah, was a yeah, movement no, well, the Moser, movement. Moser. <laughs> the Moser had no hands; it would only chime out the sound. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there was oh, that well, one. They like can't the be beat by impracticality, can they? <laughs> no, no, no. And they're just maybe, going down that same route. That will be our question on Spotify or on the YouTube. So, if you're looking at this, we will ask the question: Which watch that attempts to tell the time? So excluding the the Mosers and that that aren't even attempting to tell the time in our system, which watch that attempts to tell the time tells it the worst. Uh, this has got to be right up there with uh, with uh, the worst time telling watch that's designed to tell the time. Surely, oh, you're, uh, sure, you're not talking about Seiko and the the fact that they lose two minutes every every 24 okay. hours maybe not, not the right time yeah. <laughs> a time a time a somewhere time. on planet Earth. it is that time somewhere it just might not be that time where you are at the time but there we go H Good hence stuff. comes in the discussion of precision versus accuracy oh yeah. here we go yeah oh, that's go. A, that's a good one <laughs> that's a whole we should show have a, itself. We should definitely talk about that definitely uh, that's Kevin... gonna have big audience numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Peasants of the world surround where we talk about fewer and less. I, uh, Kevin, I uh, before we leave you and uh, before we finish the show, observations from Geneva Watch Days. What was your favourites that you saw? Oh, Lang and Zona. Well, that was a beautiful piece. Wasn't at Geneva uh, Watch Days. Yeah, it's so funny. No, that was what I said. They weren't even at the show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get this watch up uh, because we have a, in a show that was, you know, in theory vaguely dedicated to Geneva Watch Days. We seem to have spent quite a lot of time. It'd be funny talking. if we did a comic bit where we interview a bunch of people about their favorite um, watches of the show and they all name watches that weren't in Geneva. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was sort of local to me. It was down in Hampton Court, so it's not that far from Geneva. It was in Shanghai, was it not? 
No, 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 no. The the GP was in Shanghai. This was. Oh, right, did they okay. did they de- debut this anywhere? Or did they just assume all the examples would be claimed and they wouldn't share the it price? Was it was it Goodwood, uh, Hampton Court, um, oh, right, okay. car, the car event there. I'm trying. To, we've got an article on this watch, and I'm struggling now to find it. It's obviously buried within all the the uh, uh, Geneva Watch Days chat. Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, this is. Uh, it has vanished. I cannot find it at all uh, <laughs> how peculiar am I, am I looking on the wrong website has some has, ha, have have the high <laughs> as earlier has has some uh, has some high ek from somewhere suddenly uh, got rid of our alien Rip, did we published? cover that watch yet <laughs> yeah it was published on yeah. the 31st yeah. I'm, I'm having to go into the whole brand thing for those that don't know there we go 31st of August don't know why it's not running in the, uh, I will share the screen just so we can all appreciate mm. it before we leave the new A Lion Zona datagraph that you are and, frankly. And never what's the pronunciation of this, coming. Ariel? I, I don't want to offend the Germans any more than I have already. The Handwerk Kunst. Kunst. <laughs> Skunst. Kunst. Uh, Ralph, if you want to log on and just send us a wee WhatsApp. And what's the number, folks, for the WhatsApp group? Plus 447386-690-897. Ralph, you know, you I was thinking of a different longue, the one that they, the data graph on the bracelet. That's the one that I was thinking about. Oh, right, okay. Well, That was my favorite yeah. one that they came mm. out with. There you go. There's also you go. the, uh, my other favorite was the Chaikin Finnish Watch in the World. Yeah, that whole, whole shtick. Yeah, just waiting to be another battle. Half. Yeah, waiting for Bulgari to come out with theirs. Do you think that's it? Are we done? No. Oh, one point one point six five. It's gonna go down. To 1. At a certain 6. point, they're chasing a record that no one wants. Like everyone would yeah, be happy with an about. extra half millimeter if it meant the watch wouldn't break, or maybe it could what? have hands or something like that. You know, like or you, maybe you could wind it without attaching like a vehicle thing to the back of it you know like at this point it's kind of like the iphones quit making them thinner make it like survive a drop you know that would be <laughs> that would be a superior advent in my opinion well so do you think that when you buy the chicken you can buy one of those like protective covers that you would buy for your iphone a big plastic thing that goes around it with gorilla glass on it that somewhere in etsy land someone's making a protective oh, yeah. cover for well, your chicken ultra the face thin. is so minimalist if you put a cover on you could give it like a mustache or some like tears <laughs> rolling down its face you could get really creative with it interchange stop giving away these ideas so interchange I'm, I'm just writing this down so interchangeable face interchangeable face so that's part of our watch thing so don't anybody go copying that or we'll see you right that's us for this week thank you all very much for joining us we will see you again in a week or so's time. Just one thing oh, oh, before we and go. And Kevin, Kevin has a date, a special date. Special tonight. announcement. I saw, oh, I have a, I saw yeah, he did a special podcast, a minute podcast with, with Rob. And oh, stuff. really? Yeah. Oh, have you not seen this? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> tell us sure, about sure. your Tell us about your event. Well, basically, it's um, hosting uh, Best of British down in Brighton on the 7th of september we've got 11 british brands this is best of british watches uh bowcroft watches uh christopher ward benjamin james duckworth prestex uh edward christopher fears farrah isotope schofield studio underdog uh, opinion and studio underdog will be there with his hats um his hats pizza his no 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 the passion fruit hats it's beginning to sound like one of those you know the place in spain where they throw all the tomatoes and they have like the tomato run. It's beginning mm. to feel a bit like this. You're going to go to a watch event and it's just going to be food being thrown. It's going to be like the pie fight at the end of Bugsy Malone. It's, it's becoming be like us media. They only go for the swag now. <laughs> <laughs> Even the watch brands. You want are us to buy up. these things? No, no, no. <laughs> We're just going to um, come, take a picture yeah. for Instagram, and give our opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it'll be a good event. We've got uh, yeah. Scarlett Baker doing a Q and A with the brands. Uh, it's going to be free drink, and it's free, free event. The Scots what, are what, heading what can... down. One exactly. Mass. All of Scotland what, what will be want? there. <laughs> it's going to be a sunny day. Come and join us at um, at the event. Um, you can find details on 
my Instagram or email best of British watches 2024 at gmail.com. Um, or follow us on Instagram. Yeah, fine. Good stuff. Be good. Well, on that very much. final plug, we will see An you all open next week. bar at a watch event is a fantastic way to stimulate sales, I'm sure. Well, yeah, I'm going to clarify this now. It's <laughs> 100 people. <laughs> One drink. person's going to get it. He said dr- yeah. free drink. Okay. <laughs> One person is going to get a drink. And that's me. <laughs> everyone's expected it. to buy kevin one drink one drink oh, there we that go there's a, give him a passion with a pass uh, some sort of passion fruit cocktail yes absolutely <laughs> to make sure there's it. plenty of passion fruit cocktails oh, right that's it for us this week we will see you all again in a week or so this time goodbye Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.